Hi, this is Amy, and today I want to take you on a pretty comprehensive tour of the new Google Sites. The goal of this video is for you to actually be able to make a website, um, and I also want you to remember if you're a teacher, you can use this video to have your students make websites. So sometimes you don't need a website, but you want them to do this as an academic endeavor. So please feel free to use this video in either of those two ways. So the very first thing we're going to learn how to do is how to create a Google site. Uh, and we're going to do that through Google Drive. Now, used to, it didn't really work this way, but um, this is how the new sites work, and it's pretty cool. So we're going to navigate to drive.google.com. And now, when we go to New and More, we're going to see Google Sites as an option in our list. So let's just go ahead and click on that and I'd love for you if you're building a site with me to go ahead and pause this video and do that too and then we'll move on to editing the new website that we're creating. Alright, that's pretty satisfying isn't it? We've already got a Google site. Let's go ahead and give the site a name. So I'm gonna call this Amy's site and when I click up here on the file name, I see that it's going to coordinate and be the same. And also now, if I go to my Google Drive, I'm going to see that website inside my Google Drive. With the old Google Sites, sometimes it was complicated because you couldn't find your site after you made it. And I just hit refresh so that you could see there's my Google Site inside my Google Drive. All right, let's go back to our new website, and now we're going to learn how to change the header of the Google site. So the header is this part right up here. We have a couple of different choices here, um, and we're just going to leave ours the default choice, but we're going to change the image that's in the header. So we have two options. We can upload something or we can select an image, and we will practice both really quickly. So first, let's go ahead and try adding in one of the images that are inside the site. And that looks really nice. These images are obviously formatted correctly so that they look great in your site. And if you use these images, you're going to really easily be able to go back in and change your header type to whatever type you want. Now, if you don't like what was done with the readability tool down here, you can turn that off. See, it's a little bit more vibrant and the readability tool makes it a little bit more blurry and muted. So that's up to you how you choose to use that. You can also get pictures from other places. A place we, we really like is called pexels.com, P-E-X. ELS.com. So if you're trying to convey something with your site header, you know, you might want to go out and find a customized picture. This is a place that has free stock photos so that you know you're using someone's work ethically. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and find one of these pictures on Pexels. And I'm going to use the free download option. Now, when you download something from Pexels, it's just going to come down to your computer. And I'll move the bottom of my screen up quickly so that you can see. Here's the picture. And now let's go back to our site and let's change that image to an image that we're going to upload. So we're going to change it to the one that we just downloaded. By default, it's going to go into our downloads folder and we'll be able to select it from there and then it will become our new site header. You can see that once again Google tried to adjust for readability. Now in this particular case it turned my text white so that's pretty handy um, but once again we can turn that on or off. Alright so now we're looking at our home page we need to give it a title so let's go ahead and call this home page. Of course yours will probably be called something a lot more creative than that. If you're a student and you're making a portfolio it might be your name and then portfolio. If we want to change the um, the text of this title we can do that right here from the title area. It's pretty handy. Um, we can choose the alignment. We can choose what kind of font we're getting right there. Now I'll just mention really quickly that if you don't like the way this looks, one thing that you can do is go into the themes and kind of play around with the different themes that will change the font and the default color scheme of your site. Um, and then you can go from there. So they're just trying to give us a place to start and, and I kind of like it because I think it takes the focus off formatting the site and puts it back on what the content's going to be inside the site. All right, so we changed the header, and now we're going to add pictures to our page. So 
we can choose from these layouts over here or we can just add content and lay it out for ourselves. So I'm going to go back over to Pexels and download a new picture and then we're going to insert it into the page. All right, I've downloaded my picture. It's down here at the bottom of my screen. And one way I can get it into my site is just to click, hold, and drag the picture into the website. So if I've just downloaded it, I'm gonna see it down there at the bottom, and I can drag it up into my site and then drag it where I want it to go. Now, if you don't see your picture down there at the bottom, maybe you've downloaded it a long time ago and it's not gonna be at the bottom of your Chrome browser, you can go up to Images here in the top right and you can choose Upload, and you can pick any picture that you have saved from here. Adding text is going to be just as easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up to our text box area and go ahead and give it a click. Now let's say that I really want this text to be right beside my tiger. I can drag my text box right up here and I can just start typing. So let's say we're going to have a title right here. Maybe we want to change that text to title text and then underneath maybe we want it to be normal text and we're going to add in some text about our picture. And Once again if we don't like the way it looks we can go over to theme and now we can change the font style if we want, um, we can change the color scheme if we want, um, so we can add in custom colors here, we can we can really make this look exactly like we want to. Um, but it's also kind of nice sometimes just to let it be and to focus on the content. All right, the next thing we're going to learn how to do is how to get a Google file into this site. So part of the way that sites work is that they're not really going to be the place where your content lives. What you want is for your content to live inside your Google Drive and for your site to be a way for people to see that content. So let's go ahead and get a file from our Google Drive right up here in this area and we're going to embed this file in our site and then we're going to see how the view of the file changes based on what we do to it within our site. So I've identified a folder that's got a couple of pieces of content in here that I'm going to add to my site. So I'm going to go ahead and click on each of those pieces of content and insert them into my site. So there they are. They popped right in. If I want to change anything about this, I can just click, hold, and drag. Um, it's really pretty intuitive. I can also click on this slideshow and I can drag it out and make it bigger. I could pull it over and put it into the center if I wanted to. This is my document that has embedded into my site um, and I can do the same with it. So if I want to see more of this on the page then I can drag it down or I can let my reader decide that they want to see more of it and they can uh, pop that out. Alright, we're going to add one more file type to our Google site right now. Uh, this could be a video that is in your Google Drive or a video that's on YouTube. So if you're pulling a video from your Google Drive, you'll do it just the same way that we did before. We just use from Drive and then click the file that we want. If we want to pull it from YouTube, we're going to use the YouTube button right down here at the bottom in this section. So let's go ahead and search for a video right here. Alright, I'm going to choose this video and click select and it's going to come into my Google site and now I'm going to actually move the video so that it's right up here to the right of my tiger picture just to see if I can and I can so there's my video inside my site um, alright let's see what do we need to learn how to do next Next, let's add a page. So sometimes we don't just want a one page website. You know, we're going to need to have more pages for our content. So let's go ahead and go to pages up here on the right hand side and let's go ahead and use our plus sign to add a new page to our site. So we'll just call it page two and click done and let's see what happens. So it has adopted the header that was on our home page. That's great. If we want to change it, we can do that. Uh, we can also just leave it alone. And now we can go back to insert and we can add and change things just like we did before. All right, we've talked about a lot of different things so far, but not maybe the most important part of a website, which is how we publish it and make sure that people can see it in the way that we want them to. All right, so we're going to go ahead and leave our site and the settings of our files exactly like they are right now and we're going to go to publish 
and we're going to give our site a name and then we're going to look at it as a viewer would see it. All right, so we're going to click publish on our site. We're going to type in a name. This name has to be unique within your domain. Um, your school district may have a naming convention they want you to use. Otherwise, you can call it anything you want as long as it does not conflict with another site name someone else has already chosen. Right now, my site is set so that anyone at my domain can see it, but that's not really going to help me if I want people in the outside world to see it. So let me go ahead and click Manage, and let's change that so that anyone will be able to see our site. So on the Published area right here, we're going to go ahead and go to Change, and we're going to change this to Anyone Can Find and View the Published Version. So let's go ahead and click Save, and Done. All right, now it's really important to click our publish button again and then to check this site online and make sure it looks like we mean for it to. So one of the things that often goes wrong when people are publishing their site is that they want to use this link right up here in the Omnibox, but that is not the link to our website. So let's go and take a look at the published website. So we're going to go to our little down arrow here and we're going to go to view published site. Now it's important to realize that even though we're looking at the public view of our site right here, we're looking at it as ourselves. We're looking at it as the person who made the site. That's how we're logged into Chrome. So what we really need to do is copy that link and we really need to go up to the hot dogs in the top right. Let me scooch over a little bit so you can see the hot dogs in the top right and we're going to open up a new incognito window. An incognito window is going to show us a view of the web that is the view you would have if you are not logged in and this is what we have to depend on our viewers ultimately doing. They, we can't make them every single one of them log in so we need to know what this is going to look like. So I'm going to go ahead and paste and go so that we can see what this site looks like to external people. All right, remember how I put those Google files down at the bottom of this site? And when we look at this site and I'm logged in as myself, it looks like this and I see the files. But when I go and look at it as an external person, the files aren't there. And maybe that's what you intend, but if it's not, what we need to do is go back and check the permissions on those files so that we make sure they're visible through our website. All right, those files that are embedded in the site are actually located right here inside this folder. And there are two different ways I can fix this problem. One way is I can go to the folder level that these all these assets are inside of and I can go to Share and Advanced, and I can change this from Specific People Can Access to On Anyone with the Link Can View. If I do that, that's going to make those assets visible in my site. But if I don't want anyone to be able to view these other files, I don't want to accidentally share them outside my domain, I could also just go to the sharing settings on each individual file that I want people to be able to see and I can change here to anyone with the link can view. So let me make sure the settings are right on both of my assets that I want people to be able to view and then we'll go take a look at it in incognito mode again. All right, we're back over in incognito mode and now we're going to hit refresh and we're going to take another look at our site and make sure that the files we want people to see are now going to be visible. And they are, so there's the speaker bio. Again, if my reader wants to, they can pop that out. Um, and here is the embedded presentation that I added. So it looks like both of those things work fine. I also have the built-in navigation up here in the top right so that I can click from home to my page two. You might have realized just now that one of the most challenging parts of using Google Sites is making sure that your site is visible. So I'm going to add this checklist so that you can take a look at it and make sure that your site looks correct before you put it out there. It's just some things to kind of go through and think about. All right, let's go ahead and finalize our Google site and then I will wish you a good day. So if I come back to this site and I make changes, 
I'm going to need to republish this site in order for people to see those changes. So every time I make a change that I'm ready for the public to view, I'm going to go ahead and publish it again. And then if my viewer already has that site open, they'll need to click refresh to see those changes. Um, if they don't, then they'll see them as soon as they load the site. So I hope that that helps you make your first Google site perhaps. Um, there's so much you can do with Google Sites, so many more elaborate things. Buttons have just been added recently so you can put buttons into your Google site and link those buttons to other websites for example or other materials that you want people to be able to see. You also have these nice layouts over here that you can switch to to make your site maybe look a little bit more professional. Um, it kind of reminds me of S'more if you've ever used that tool before. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this video, I'd love it if you would subscribe to our channel. If you have questions, please feel free to leave them beneath this video in the comments area and we'll be glad to try to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, and thanks for sharing this video far and wide. It helps us and hopefully it helps you too. Have a great day. Bye-bye.